I am Louise Mier Dunn. My mother was the muralist Hildreth Mier, an artist, and Austin Purvis were asked to coordinate all the artwork for the SS United States. That meant searching for the right artist for each commission. Many of the artists, including Peter Astuni, Gwen Lux, and Ray Wendell, came to my mother's studio where we lived to show their work to my mother. This might entail more than one visit at the beginning. And as designs came closer to finish, my mother would take them to Ann Urquhart and Dot Markwald, the decorators of the SS United States to receive their approval. 14 artists were hired to create work in fireproof materials of glass, metal, and enamel. According to the press release issued by the SS United States, homogeneity in the entire decorative art scheme of the great ship was desirable, they felt, and in order to achieve it within the fireproof and weight limitations, the supervisory help of the two artists in this particular phrase seemed essential. Accordingly, in addition to contributing work of their own, Mrs. Mier and Mr. Purvis advised the decorators in the selection of other artists and also served in a cr critical capacity on the work submitted. My mother designed the map of the Mississippi, Father of Waters, that Lou Ross had executed in her studio. It was placed on the forward wall of the cabin class lounge. This was my mother's sixth commission to decorate an ocean liner. The map is currently in the archives of the National Museum of American History in Washington, DC, and not on public view. The map needs restoration, as at some point the map was repainted in shades of green with red highlights. The map will find its way back onto the ship, hopefully one day. New York City to La Havre, France, and Southampton, England. For those who sailed on her, it will be a day long remembered. Numerous friends came to bid us farewell, since we had not planned to return to New York for 15 months. We were off on a grand tour after my college graduation visiting various climes, countries, and diverse people by land, on the sea, and in the air. It had all been very exciting. Prior to our departure in our cabin, there was a champagne party with toasts and good wishes, lots of flowers, telegrams, and presents. As the ship pulled away from the dock, I remember standing near Ray Wendell, one of the artists and an eligible bachelor. I know that General John M. Franklin, President of the United States Lines, was on board with his daughter, Laura Franklin, whom I had met at debutante parties in Baltimore. My mother loved to write and documented our grand tour. She describes the departure from the dock in New York City on July 3rd, 1952. It was noon of a scorching hot day. I stood beside Gwen Lux on the boat deck, looking down on the cheering, waving crowd on the decorated pier. Bands were playing, horns were tooting, and the great deep voice of the ship herself roared overhead. Almost imperceptibly, in the midst of the din, the great moment arrives, and the thrill of any sailing stole over me. Is she? Is she? Yes, she is moving. 
I could tell by one of the davits of the nearest lifeboats. The pier beyond began to slip to the left, slowly at first, and then faster. She was moving. She was off our mighty United States after all the years of planning and work and worry and strain. She was off on her maiden voyage. One of our, my fondest memories was the night the ship was going for the Blue Rebond, beating the current record for the fastest crossing of the Atlantic. We were supposed to be celebrating on one of the upper decks. I had gone to the cabin and changed my shoes and put on a tweed coat to brave the elements. I had reconnected with an old bro, Frank Boaz, and he and I went to the upper deck for the celebration, but found ourselves alone with the fierce wind and the foul weather. We retreated to the enclosed promenade deck where we discovered Meyer Davis playing music and Mrs. William Francis Gibbs leading the conga line while her husband was up on the bridge with Captain Anderson. A group of us young people continued to party and ended up in the dining room for breakfast, still in our evening clothes, black tie and all. I remember going to bed as my mother was being served her breakfast in bed. In my mother's documentation, she writes about being invited to two of the big cocktail parties and of attending a small one in the Gibbs cabin where she met Fritz Reiner, a prominent conductor and his wife. I went to Mrs. Vincent Axter's party for the young. My mother had a deck chair next to Anne Urquhart and Dot Markwald and their families. She recounts that it was a joy as always to be near them. There is no pleasure on earth like working for a common objective with people I respect, admire, and like. Anne Urquhart and Dot Markwald are princes to work for. I deeply regretted the ending of the almost daily contact over the last three years with those two utterly delightful people. Only those who were close to them realized what their undertaking had been, and we could only wonder at how they kept their balance, their judgment, and their sense of humor. Undoubtedly, it was the sense of humor that saved them. My mother said of the ship, the whole ship was modern, very sleek and smooth and cut the water like a knife. It was wonderful to be part of the attaining the Blue Rebond, which the British had held for so many years. And of course they were sad to lose it, but we were thrilled to gain the Blue Rebond.